folks coming in. Well, I'm very, very excited. This is my first time ever in Hong Kong. My second time sort of in Asia in general. But I've been super impressed with just driving around. I haven't really seen that much Hong Kong yet. I'm going to be here for a few days, so I'm looking forward to it. And uh, since this is a relatively intimate crowd, if you have any questions in the course of what I'm talking, you know, feel free to just raise your hand or holler or anything like that. There's no need to be shy. Before I even get started, I want to put up some of my contact details, uh, simply because if uh, you want to get in touch with me or Twitter me or add me on Facebook or anything like that, uh, please do. Because then, you know, it's like a contest, right? Whoever has the most followers wins. And I'm losing to MC Hammer right now, which is embarrassing. But, since this is the first ever word camp here in Hong Kong, right? Uh, <laughs> just making sure. I, it's usually good to start with a little bit of history to talk about where we've come from before we talk about where we're going. So this is a picture of my first ever blog. Um, it was really terrible. <laughs> I read about like Linux and Slashdot and Erosion. Uh, it used movable type. And as you can see, the design was not terribly uh, evocative. But a year, about a year after I started this, I found some software called B2 Cafe. Did anyone use B2 here back in the day? And we got one old school, LA Hat. <laughs> B2 was uh, of the software at the time. There was Blogger, Text Pattern, Google Type. And B2 was the only one that was PHP and MySQL and also open source. So when I found it, I was, uh, I was actually really excited about it because it was the first sort of blogging software that I was able to modify. B2 was also significant because it was my first ever contribution to open source. At the time, uh, I was really into typography. Well, I still am into typography. I was really into typography. And um, if we have any typography geeks here, you know that typography on the web is not usually that easy. Uh, for example, to do a proper apostrophe versus a prime mark, uh, if you're typing in HTML, you have to type, if you're typing the word, say, don't, you would type D-O-N, uh, ampersand, hash, 8217, semicolon, T. <laughs> it slows you down a little, right? Um, which isn't that great when you're blogging. So, I, uh, I discovered the world of reg regular expressions, right, regex, and I created some code that would automatically, uh, we call it texturize your text. So it automatically said the code was so good it made your code, your quotes curl, and um, and put it in. And the cool thing was that the lead developer of B2 at the time, Michelle Valdredi, uh, who was in Corsica, France, saw this code and got so excited he said, "Well, should submit it to the core." And I never. I had really contemplated doing something like that. So I put the patch up on SourceForge. It was accepted. And I had this huge rush, a complete high, because code I had written was running on literally dozens of blogs around the world. <laughs> and, um, and that was just the most amazing feeling. And so that sort of was how I cut the initial bug for open source. And I've been you know, caught up in it ever since. So B2 had an interesting story, because as I said, there was the lead developer, Michelle. And um, he was. Uh, he was really the only main guy working on the software with commit and admin rights and everything like that. And then one day, uh, he just sort of stopped showing up. And, you know, day turned into a month, turned into a couple months. The domain was going to expire soon, and we weren't really sure what was happening. So I did this blog post of the blogging software dilemma. Um, and basically what I was saying was that, you know, there's all this great stuff out there. The simplicity of Blogger, the flexibility of Google type, uh, everything like that. It'd be cool if you know, one of these, if something could combine it all. And it was actually about a day later, this fella up there, Mike Little, um, in London, England, left the comic. You see, he says, if you're serious about 14 b 2 I'd be interested in contributing. <coughs> that right there is the birth of WordPress, that comic. Uh, Mike and I had never met before. We were both sort of contributors to B2. Uh, we had never met, we did, we wouldn't meet for another about two years. Um, but we started working together. The initial versions of WordPress well, first we had our texturized code. Mike had written uh, a links manager, which is now sort of the blog roll feature of WordPress. And we started to really think about web scripts differently in terms of the installation. Uh, and that was the birth of the, the famous five minute install. Which, has anyone done the five minute install in here? <laughs> a few folks, right? Just out of curiosity, just as a, a matter, who here uses WordPress.org? So software you download and start, where's your hands at? 
And who here uses WordPress.com? The .com version. All right, so about, it's way more, I think it's blocked in most of China, usually, so. At like WordCamp Beijing, or it was one, I think it was WordCamp Beijing, I asked, and it was you know, hundreds of people, and one person raised their hand. <laughs> like, oh, man, we something wrong here. <laughs> but regardless, this was, um, this was sort of how it all got started, which is kind of appropriate, right? That WordPress itself got started on a blog, because blogs are all about connecting people. So a few years pass, <laughs> and here we are, right? This is actually not the most up-to-date graphic. It doesn't have all the WordCamps, but um, now we've gone from being something that in the initial, in the, the first versions of WordPress actually had more developers than users. It's the only one that the developers are actually using it. To now folks all around the world are you know, taking a beautiful Sunday afternoon off to talk about this stuff inside a giant egg. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, and so the word camps to me are actually one of the most interesting things that's happened to WordPress in a long time. Uh, because it's sort of the epitome of the WordPress philosophy. Uh, other software I like to talk about Oracle. They basically take over San Francisco for two weeks. They, you know, take over all the parks. They have like 50,000 people come in. It's a giant conference. It costs thousands of dollars. Um, and it's a big monolithic thing. Where the nature of WordPress events is very much like the software itself. It's distributed. It's local. It's in the local language where possible. And, um, you know, typically they're super cheap. You know, it's like, how much was this one? Does this WordCamp cost any money? Ten dollars? How much is ten? Is that ten dollars U.S. or ten dollars one? A dollar and a half U.S. Man, what a deal! <laughs> That's pretty good. It feels like we're ripping people off in San Francisco. We charge them twenty dollars, um, but the twenty dollars includes, you know, sessions, lunch, T-shirt, booze, everything good. Um, but the idea is really the cost isn't that important, it's about the accessibility. Right? You don't have to travel halfway around the world to meet other people who are passionate about the same things you are. There's almost always drinking at these work camps, which is funny. You know, that's one of the worn WordPress tattoos. Um, and they sort of reflect the local cultures as well. So this is one in Indonesia, that was a few months ago. They had a million sponsors, it looked like a NASCAR. Um, it's Paris, I could like their logo. See, they got the wine, the Parisian guy, you know. <laughs> uh, this one was really, this was also Indonesia. Does anyone recognize what's going on there? The t that t-shirt? It's the WordPress logo, but done in the names of uh, the jazz musicians that we named the releases for, which I thought was pretty neat. We have, you know, South Africa was a lot of fun. There's always t-shirts are always a big deal at all the work camps. Sometimes lack of t-shirts is a big deal at the work camps. <laughs> you know, people... What's interesting to me is that people have become very passionate beyond what I ever would have imagined about the software. I'll talk about why later. Uh, there's one guy, this is a, not a fake WordPress tattoo, this is a real, honest to goodness tattoo. Permanent. <laughs> I guess he could fill it in or something, but that's, this is, this is a real person, it's not me. That's, people last at <laughs> Shanghai thought it was me, I'm like, nope, nothing there. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be like a circuit board, like you peel away the skin and there's a circuit board. What engenders that? Well, last year was a pretty exciting year for us because we did three major releases. These were the, the names of the musicians they were named after, Michael Berker, McCoy Tyner, and John Coltrane, two saxophonists and a pianist. And uh, we did sort of a, it was a very pivotal year for, for WordPress because to me it was sort of like the maturation of things we've been working on for a very, very long time. Uh, features like post revisions are things I've been thinking about for like three or